Okay, now what we're going to do is manually calculate the variance and the standard deviation. And again, you can do these with formulas in Excel, but I'm repeating them here so that you understand the underlying data and inputs that go into those formulas that generate the final output. That'll be important as you go through the course and understand what changes to the underlying data are going to cause shifts or changes in the variance and the standard deviation. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things in our setup to our Excel spreadsheet. Uh, some things that that uh, are a little bit more have to do with formatting than, than anything else. And one of those is I'm going to hide columns J and K here in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is click on column J, right click, and then insert a new column. And what I'm going to do here is call this uh, the BMI uh, difference just as a, as a reference. Um, we'll double click on the icon or the, the cursor between the two, set the two columns and then click on K, hold my mouse button down and highlight L and then right click and choose hide columns. Now those columns are hidden. I just want to do that so I can make space. I wouldn't normally hide it because those columns happen to be inputs to other formulas. I just need it so I can show it as a reference on the screen. If I want to get those columns back, I can place my cursor between J and M and expand them, but a quicker way to do it is to click on J and move your mouse cursor over to M, right click and then choose unhide columns and it will unhide the two columns that we had previously hidden. All right, so first thing we need to do on uh, on this particular cell is hit the equal sign, of course, because we're, we're going to create a formula. And then what we need to do here is take the BMI value, and I'm going to use an open parenthesis here, and then column uh, cell I2 uh, is the BMI value minus the mean of the BMI, which we already calculated here. So we're going to take that value. <clears throat> All right, and then we're going to do a close parenthesis, and we need the uh, we need to uh, make this be uh, ex an exponent. So we need that that caret symbol again above the six key. So shift six, and then two. So we need to square this value. Now there's one other thing change we want to make, and that's that this reference to I10 needs to be an absolute reference. So we'll add dollar signs before the letter and before the number there for the row and the uh, in the column. All right, so now I have the, the values here. I can just grab the corner, right lower corner, and pull this down and then have it calculate uh, the difference, the squared difference between uh, the value and, and the mean. All right, so that portion of it's done. That's sort of the first step in doing this. Now what we need to do is sum the values in this squared differences column. And to do that, of course, we're going to use the sum function again and highlight these cells. I'm going to go a little bit faster since we've already done this in, in previous videos. So you should have this pretty much down pat at this point. All right, so we'll go ahead and sum that. We get 22. And then here I'm going to I'm going to make one minor change and um, something that's not in most of the course books, but I'm going to call this particular cell the n minus one column. And so what we'll do is we'll say equals uh, this value here that's in that cell minus one. And that's because one, uh, the, the value, the count of samples that we have minus one is the input that we need uh, to do the the standard deviation formula. And so I want to do that now so I can reference that uh, later. All right, so now I have the sum in there. Uh, now I can go ahead and, and calculate the variance. So let's go ahead and do the variance portion of it. So I'm going to go back to cell H13 and we'll type in variance. And this is actually a pretty simple calculation. So we'll say the variance equals uh, the cell J8, which is the sum of the square differences, divided by N minus 1, which is the cell here that we've already calculated before, and then we'll hit enter. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove some of the decimal places here. We don't need all of those, so we'll get 5.49 uh, as the variance. <clears throat> now all the variance feeds into this to the standard deviation, so we'll type ST period dev for the standard deviation. Again, there's a formula built into Excel for this, but I'm doing it so you understand how these, these formulas work. 
And this is actually really simple because the, the standard deviation at this point is just the square root of the variance. So we'll just do SQRT, which is the square root, and then we just have to give it the number and then a closing parenthesis, and we're done. And again, I'm gonna zip this down a bit to make the decimal place is a bit lower. All right, so again, that's breaking down the entire calculation. When you look inside your book or your workbook at the, at the standard deviation equation, it's a little bit freaky when you look at it, but now that we've done it as each individual step to that calculation, what we summarize, x is our sample minus x bar, which is our mean, square that, and then divide n minus one, which our sample size minus one, and then take the square root of that value. So we've just broken it down into each individual step so you see where that comes from. Now, like I said, as we progress through the course, you'll start to understand how changes in the sample size and changes in the variance will affect the standard deviation, and I hope that will sort of make sense now that you've done this calculation manually. That's the last video here on this series on doing formulas and functions. Now we're gonna move on to the data analysis pack.